Oh, it's a bit dreary out here this morning. Not the nicest. However, good morning everyone and welcome back. It is good to be home again after being away on holiday for the last week. Oh, these cows have made a mess, look at that. That is shocking. So, I was at home and it was about nine o'clock at night last night and it just started raining and it wasn't on the forecast and it was actually quite heavy which is which is a real bummer if I had known I could have stood these cows off but I didn't think it was going to be that bad so I get them moved anyway get them onto some fresh grass It's just been rather wet as of recently. We have had quite a bit of rain last week and I thought it was going to fine up for a bit but it just wasn't the case. I've also started feeding this mob a bale of silage a day just to sort of top them up a little bit. It does look fairly black but I think it looks worse than it actually is. They have trampled quite a lot of grass into the ground too like down there with it just being so wet but I can't help that. And the other day when I got back, I actually moved the cows uh, into this break here. And it was it was pretty wet that day too actually, so I moved them off. They're only in here for about four hours and you can sort of see the damage they've done at this end. The grass will grow back through it, but you can see like in here, like there's, there's actually pretty long grass that they've just sort of stood in the ground, which is a bit of a shame. It's kind of hard at the moment to try and not make a mess. I have stood cows off on the cow shed yard for a couple of nights over the weekend to try and minimize the damage which certainly helps but you can't do it all the time because it is pretty hard on them. Might have actually had a little bit more than I thought last night. It was it was pretty wet and there wa was water lying in the paddocks but I didn't think it was quite this bad. You can see how squelchy it is was definitely lying in these low-lying areas before but it's, it's been well topped up again now. Next is the heifers which are over here and they are calling out and yes they've made a bit of a mess too. Damn, damn I really didn't expect that rain. I bought them down here because I don't use any of these paddocks for carving because there's a drain down the bottom and I thought oh well, the weather forecast look real good so I'll stick them down here and, and chew this off. However in hindsight that was a pretty big mistake. Happy heifers, they're a lot happier now. I hadn't actually set a break up for them for this morning. I just bought a reel over and I whacked it up. I was almost going to try and get two days through here, but I've just given them the whole lot. Looks like there could be a little bit of rain tonight, which may turn out to be a bit, so we'll fill them up. It is pretty hard with heifers. They do tend to make more of a mess than the cows. They, they walk around a lot more, uh, but still not too bad. And it's, it's one of our challenges Having cows outside in the winter, we are pretty unique like that. There's not a lot of countries that do it. Uh, and it, it definitely is a challenge trying not to make a mess when you get adverse weather conditions like a lot of rain. A lot of rain falls how you get it. So you can see, have made a bit of a mess behind me here. It is a bit clayey and it looks a lot like the other one. So it looks a lot worse than it actually is. The grass will grow back through it. I wasn't quite concerned down here because it's not the best paddock. Uh, but still we, we want to limit this we don't want to make mess because then it just limits our grass growth in the spring and through the summer so uh, not good but there's not a lot i could have done either look at that Eva. she's a beauty they're in really good condition i'm really happy with them they're looking great so that is that is a bonus well it's actually just started drizzling now which isn't really ideal looked like today was going to be fine it was nice to get away last week, nice to get away for a week, week's break, went over to the mount, just sort of recharge the batteries, it was quite cool this year because we went with mum and dad as well, so the whole lot of us went over, which was, yeah, really cool, 
and missed out on the field days unfortunately. I had a lot of messages and photos from you guys that watched that went and checked out that scimitar trailer there which was pretty cool. It's a uh, it's a shame I didn't get along, there were a few things I was sort of looking at, or wanting to look at maybe I should say. Yesterday Arvo I went and picked up some plants, these were growing at Waikiria Prison which is a big prison just south of Te Amuru, sort of over that way. And they had extra so they've given them out to catchment groups as such to for people to plant them so they were free which was nice. I've got five trays here of carrots, which will go beside the drains, that's what I'm planning for them. I've got 20 manuka plants here, manuka or kanuka, I think it's manuka, and then just four flaxes to put in somewhere as well. I think in total there's 180 plants which is awesome so I need to probably make a start on that. Try and get some done maybe today at some point. I think there was 30 mils in the gauge last night when I had a look. And there's just over 40, so we probably had 15 mils overnight, it was actually quite a bit. That's 40 and then I tipped out another 40 when I got back from holiday on the Friday. I think it was at 40 or it might have been 50 or 60. So we've had close to, or well, upwards of 80 mils of rain in the last sort of 10 days. And I know it doesn't sound like heaps, you know, it's not like 150. But it has just made everything nice and soggy and damp now. I've just been and done the, the school run this morning and... Look at that, there's a little bit of blue sky now, which is nice. Johan has also come, which is great timing. He texted me this morning saying it's still all good to come at 10 o'clock, and I totally forgot about it, but that, that's sweet as. So we're going to do some uh, eDNA samples, is it? Yep, that's right. And what does eDNA stand for? Yeah, ED, E stands for environmental, and then DNA. So oh, okay. we're looking just at what sort of native biodiversity you're going to have in around your streams on farm yeah especially with being connected to to the lake, the lake in yeah a pretty special way all the headwaters effectively so uh, Johan works for Dairy and Z but he's just taken this role on this season yep because you were well you are a dairy farmer by trade yep that's it still still got the farm 215 cows just out of Moran's all so and yeah. have you put a share milk or contract contract, contract, contract milker on, on it I know. yeah that Tracy's going awesome. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, it gives me an opportunity to try these different things, eh? Yeah, yeah, which is really cool. And Johan's pretty experienced. Well, not I. Yeah, I'd say experienced in like the environmental <laughs> side. He's done a lot on his farm, and he hosts field days. And you were the Waikato. Yep, Waikato Balance Farm Environment um, Supreme winner in 2021. Our family were lucky enough to win that. Eh? Which, which is a massive achievement, like you up against some pretty stiff competition, so yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's pretty pretty awesome. There's some cool stories out there and just trying to highlight what we're doing on farm, everyone can do it, it's not uh, yeah. not, not too hard, you just got to focus on these on the right things. Eh? And, exactly, and if you can show people what to do, and yep. it certainly helps along the way, but that is very cool. So. Yeah, we're gonna go take a couple of water samples, get them tested, and and see what comes back. So it's like a it's like a peg, like a tent peg. Oh yeah. And it has a circle. Oh, 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 oh so you actually leave it in the water. Yeah, you just oh leave it right. In there. Yeah, yeah. Especially in flowing water because um water can just keep passing yes. through it. So I didn't. I thought you'd take a sample with you, like take a sample away with you, but you actually leave it in the. No, nah, it's about because what what you're trying to do is um let the there's a lot of eDNA or DNA yeah. uh, flowing through, so you want to try to capture it. So more time you have, then you're capturing the, um, the sun, you know, like you'll cap, you'll have more likelihood of capturing, capturing something, yeah, 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 through the filter, yeah. But no, I think this will be a good spot, especially if there's quite a bit of a catchment up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, there is quite a big catchment up there for for where we're going to put it. Yeah, I was just explaining that there's two sorts of um, two sorts of samples that we're doing. So the one that we're going to put in. Now or maybe I'll leave it till the water drops down a little bit as, as I put it in the stream, over time it picks up the DNA in it whereas if it's more of a stagnant area, sort of like an area like this where the drains are sort of backed up a little bit, that's where you'd take a bit of a syringe sample. You, uh, you wear gloves. Oh you don't want to get any of your DNA on it? Nah, it'll just pick up Andrew Mackey's DNA. <laughs> I'm sure you've got a wee in the, around here, it'll pick you up anyway. <laughs> But that's it there. Oh, it's that's pretty, it. It's pretty simple. Oh, it's tiny. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, way yeah. smaller than I thought. Yeah, and then in it, in the back there, there's a, um, a little tab. Yes. A tab, and then you, you pull that out. When you're ready to go. Yeah, once you've taken your sample, and then there's a little there's a syringe with some, uh, it's just a fluid that 
just preserves the DNA oh, okay. when you're sending it away. Ah, right. And there's a little pot in the bottom there. Oh, get it out. Oh, it comes with gloves and stuff too. Yeah, it comes with little gloves. And then um, chuck it in there, squirt the um, syringe in, shake it about, and then and then send it away. And then it usually takes about a month, three or four weeks. So to get the sample back. To get the return um, sample, yeah. And when it does, I'll, I'll um, at Dairy NZ we've got a guy there who's this is his jam. He's a he's oh, yeah. freshwater ecologist, uh, freshwater scientist. Or maybe maybe I could come into Dairy NZ. Maybe maybe I could come over and. Oh no! Nah. No. Nah? I can tell you what he loves coming out. Oh, he wants to come out. That'd be perfect because then. it's way better getting. It's the number one rule with anything is get them on your farm. Yeah. Because because it's they get to see what you're about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that'd be cool if he if he wants to come out and yeah. sort of explain it a little bit more, but yeah. that'd be awesome. This is the, the drain that I've picked, and it's not too deep. I've, oh, well, look at that. Let's see. It's a, bit, a little bit deep where the water flow is, down where it's a bit pebbly. But we're going to stick it in here, maybe in the flow, so somewhere down there. Well, I'm going to stick it in. That's the, that's the way it's got to go. I might put it right in here. Sitting above in the water flow, not right there. Whoops. Can I move the um, things up a oh, bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. I just, it's quite soft, eh? Yep. I'll go like that. Yep. There we go. It's off the bottom. I think you guys can see it on the video, but I'll just leave that there for a couple of days. Hopefully it's all right. There it goes. It's just working its magic. You can see it moving around. I don't know if you guys can see it on the video, but it's sort of going like this. And it'll just catch anything coming down. So what do you think's going to be picked up in these samples, Johan? Like, obviously, there's eels in the drains. Yeah, eels is definitely... Um, most of New Zealand has, has eels. So New Zealand has uh, three types of eels. We've got a long fin, the native New Zealand eel, and then the short fin. And then we've also got, but it's pretty rare, the Australian spotted oh, uh, eel. But I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, I didn't know. I've never seen one, but I know Far that it out. exists. But it's so, an Aussie, so, so we you... don't want to be too, uh, too worried about that. <laughs> and Johan was saying before too, though, that our eels, or no, one of them, the short fin? The long fin. The, the long, long fin's nat no, not native, but it's only in New Zealand throughout, yeah, only in New Zealand, which, yep. is, which right. is pretty cool. And the really, really amazing thing is that once they get to a breeding age, which is about 90 years old. Yeah, it can be anywhere from 69, like they can get pretty old. So the big eels, they'll go to their breeding spot, which is actually in Samoa or around Samoa there in the ocean. So they'll go up there, breed, and then they die. And then their offspring, it's not, it's quite hard to confirm, but they, uh, what is the, it? The elvers, I think... the elvers, they find, like, they get into the currents that are in the Pacific there and they'll, they'll end up back in New Zealand. And they say that these, the spawn or the, the, the young eels will come back to the same streams that the pet or the mother grew up in or, yep. or lived in, it's... which is, which is mind blowing. Like, uh, yeah, it is absolutely mind blowing that they go all that way and then they can find it back to yep. these little streams. <laughs> it's, yeah, fascinating, yep. I think. I suppose those are the main, main things that would be in here, but also uh, kura, which is, is it kura? Yep. Uh, they're like little tiny crayfish. I'm not sure if we would have any in our drains or waterways. Waterways they should be called. I mm. haven't seen any, but that's not to say they're not there. No, no, you, we'll, we'll see. We'll pick it up anyway. Yeah. And, um, the other one is our native fish. We have quite a lot of uh, migratory fish. Which are quite small animals, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Well, you have the giant kokapu, which can grow up to 30, 40 centimetres. Oh, yeah. So, um, and I found some of them in, within your catchment. No we'll way. find some here, but definitely along the Mung is Mungapiko. Ah, uh, uh, Mungapiko, yeah, it's just over yeah, there, yeah. yeah. Yep. So, yeah, no, we'll definitely... Uh, that's that's pretty good, and that's the whole point of these these samples. It's actually just to see if they're there in the first place, which which I don't. Know. I definitely know there's eels here, uh, but I didn't know there was anything else. So yeah, it'd be quite cool to have a look and, and see what turns up. And it gives you a purpose to why you're doing all your planting, and exactly, exactly. for all these fish. And um, it, it would also be quite cool to measure what's here now, and then come back in five or ten years and measure again and say, well, has it increased where we've planted? Has there been an increase in those areas or whatnot? It's just a, it is quite a cool guide to, yep. to uh, see how you're going. Where, where you can see it with all the plants as they're growing up and you can't see it, or you could see it in the water quality, but you, it's a good way to judge it as well. So we're at our second spot now and I thought this would be quite good because this is the other drain coming down from the, the new planting that we've done up there. This is that waterway. So there's really two that feed into 
that sort of main drain at the bottom, this one, and where we've just put the last sample. So good little spot to put it, and it's also, yeah, yeah, quite a good depth and good drain through here. I can if we just stick it in there somewhere. Yep, it's off the bottom. We'll move to the next spot down at the lake here. We're just going to take a sample from one of these drains to see what sort of life's in, in the water down here. And I'm guessing it's going to pick up a heap of uh, waterfowl like ducks. But yeah, it'll be good, to, be good to have a look though. See how much it varies from where we are and down here at the lake. This is where all our drains come to down here. And then it comes out into, into the lake, which is obviously right there. But this one is through a syringe, so I've got a pump a litre through here. So that's the actual... And that goes on the end of your Which syringe. way does it go? Um, that way? Because that's the screw... Oh no. No, no, it's that way. So what you got to do is um, suck, and then each time you got to take that off... Oh, and pump it. And then pump, pump it out. Push it through, and then suck and push through, yeah. Okay. Okay, so that might take a while. And then screw it on. Yep. And then push it out. Yep. And then... I got you. So we'll do that 20 times. <laughs> <laughs> it's like riveting, riveting YouTube stuff, eh? Oh, yeah, I see what you mean about it being it's hard. hard. It's hard, eh? Yeah, and the 20 times, because that filter is going to fill up with sediment. So you take that off, maybe put it to the side, and then so you don't drop it. We got onto the third push, the third, third syringe, and there's already oh, sure. heaps of sediment in the in the actual filter bit, and it's and it's becoming near impossible to push out. The water's actually coming back out the rubber stopper. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's hard. So that's a no go. No, we're not going to get a litre through there, are we? Nah. Could you just test what you got? Yeah, I'll chuck it in there. Yeah, see what happens. It's all about just the litre is. The get more of that DNA. Yeah, so yeah, more volume. Yeah, that's a shame. So I'm not sure if that one's gonna work the best because we didn't obviously put enough volume of water through it, but we've got these two sitting in the stream, so they'll sit there for the next couple of days. Then I will go and get them. I'll, I'll probably put in a video what I do and how I put them in the bag and then I'll give it to Johan and he's gonna send it off for testing. But these tests, it's quite cool actually. They're made in New Zealand, down in Wellington, I think it is, and they are Roughly about three hundred dollars, or is it? Yeah, just under. Just under three hundred dollars per test, but that inc that includes everything, so the sample and then also the test itself. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty interesting. But yeah. I actually went and showed um, Johan my areas that I planted before, or that we did just under a year ago. Those three big areas, and and yeah, he was impressed with it. Amazing. So amazing. Yeah, and give me a little bit of food for thought going forward too. Some names for tr to try and get some more potential funding and, and stuff. Because it is out there, it's just where to look. And that is probably one of the hard parts and something that people struggle with as well. I came up to grab a spade. I was going to go put some of those plants in the ground, but <laughs> I don't know where it is. It's not there. And I couldn't see it down at home. So I've obviously put it somewhere and I've forgotten where it is. But while I was up here, I've taken a few photos of this hay rack because I'm going to get another one uh, but I need to take some pictures of this base here because they don't come with that that's the original thing there but it's a little bit flimsy so we've seen or well, dad's seen Trish at the field days from mainline sheet metals and she's going to uh, do up one of these or, or put one of these on it for us I just need to send her some photos having two of them will be awesome one for each mob there is that green one there but I, I hate those I reckon they're so niggly to fill and you can't get as much in them so those other ones are perfect however that will pretty much wrap this video up guys i need to go and keep looking for my spade it is going to be interesting to send those water samples away and see what they come back with i actually put it up on my instagram and one of my mates sean he sent me the link you can actually see public ones throughout New Zealand what their water results have come back at and this is what they look like so this is the sort of wheel there's obviously a lot of things they've found in that water but that just gives you a good idea of, of what it comes back with and when mine come back we can go through it hopefully hopefully we can get one of the water scientists out and he can sort of explain it a little bit more but that gives you a pretty good understanding but that'll do it awesome thanks for watching and I'll see you next time